Hello and welcome, this is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I am going to be playing a melee necromancer. No, just kidding, I'm playing a summon necromancer. It's one of the most requested builds on the channel, so figured I'd do it. With that being said, the start off is always a bit rough with this character class, as you can tell, like Rock Conditions or Real Fight. I only have three skeletons at this point, so a bit rough for sure. Definitely a play and get stronger kind of build. And with that I mean that this exponentially grows in power. Like when you get your third skeleton, it's like a 30% power raise. And you get your fourth one, it's a 25% power raise. But to get there is... Oof. Anyway, we go ahead and get to the dark wood. We run for our lives. Like, the brutes just beat our skellies. Gotta run for the hills. Run for our lives, etc. With that, we head to the tower cellar as usual, where we almost die. But we do make it, and we go through that door where the game is just mean. Like, every time I went through that door, it was just a boss pack waiting. It's like, why would you do that to me? Don't be like that. Anyway, as usual, we end up farming for our Tal and Eth rune, and we make a stealth, and after that we head to Andariel, who we just killed by using Iron Maiden and minions. And you can already tell with Andariel targeting the skeletons, like this is a very safe build. Like look at me just standing there having manager's potential. And here as well, just more management potential. And then we go towards Act 2 and in Act 2 we go and fight the Summoner who is actually a really hard fight. Because the Arcane Sanctuary is where Fun goes to die with this build. Yeah, the one thing this build does really well is fighting bosses. So, I mean, look at this Durial fight. Like, he's not gonna do anything. As long as I cast my Golem, that is. And the right spell. I, I can see the amp damage on him. It's okay. This is also just the speedrun strat of how to do this, by the way. If anyone's wondering, like, this is what the speedrunners do. But they do it much better than I do. Because, man, I still almost fuck it up. But we get him. And we head for the council. The final part of our groceries. The flail. Go and kill some council members. And yeah, nothing is targeting the necro, so you're very, very safe. If you want to play a build that's very safe, this is the build for you. You can see it even better when I'm in hell in a bit, because... Yeah, you can see it there, because things just aren't targeting you. Like this as well, like Mephisto is just getting Iron Maiden. And I'm barely even even bothering with gear, so. You just don't need to. Like, people say that you can clear the game without equipment. Or without gear, and I'm not completely sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's really possible. Then we head towards actually a really hard fight, as usual, the Diablo fight. It's just, he has a lot of range stuff that doesn't trigger Iron Maiden. We need to do a lot of running, a lot of mana management. And I need to press the right button. I keep shortcutting towards I'm um, damaged instead of Iron Maiden, which is annoying, but it's it's a matter of getting used to it. 
I mean, I even have to use the second bar of skills. The, the Necro is the only class that uses like two bars of skills and still might come up short. It's insane. It's just like you have a nick for that, a knack for that, and it's... Yeah, you need all of them. Yeah, a very dangerous Diablo fight, very much based around getting him into a position where he wants to melee your golem. But a lot of what he's doing is just casting lightnings, casting firestorms. Casting the really sweet fire nova that I wish I could cast as well. But when I say that this build grows exponentially, you'll see when I fight the bosses in Nightmare and Hell, especially Hell. But here I finally have him on a simple plan of just standing still and meleeing. And you can tell that the damage still isn't that great, but it's a strategy at least. To be fair, as long as he's targeting the golem and not me, I'm very happy. Yeah, it's a hard fight for sure. If you if you mess this up at least once or twice, you will die. So, I mean, look at that. That's just a scamp of a hit and it's just half my life. We beat him. Woo, we did the thing. And then we go and beat Pindleskin up with his own friends. Yeah, Nilatok's Temple is a very good place to get started on your raising skeletons. They're just roaming around for free. You can be like, I want that one and that one and that one. And I'll take that one and just raise them up from the dead and be fine. After that, we head towards the Ancients. As you can tell, I've hit level 30 at this point. I have some revived. I'm actually very high level with this build in normal because I just kept killing everything because your, your skeletons charge at everything. So you're killing everything. Which means you're getting a lot of levels. I usually don't kill everything. Like I kill like 40%, 30% of the creatures, maybe less. Basically just the champions, the uniques. And here we go for the same strat on Bale. But Bale is just a lot less dangerous than Diablo. Like his stuff just doesn't do that much damage which is nice. And he just doesn't spawn a clone which is also very nice. So yeah, it took a while, but Bill goes down. And after that, I go do some shopping. I need a few items, but the first one is a hunter's bow. That's the one we're shopping in normal. I'm going to shop the other ones later, but I need to shop multiple times in this run. And I bought a three socket hunter bow, and you're like, why would you do that? Well, because TTLM, this room has had a big buff. Now everything has thorns. We go ahead and kill Andaro and look at the speed of this now. This is insanely quick compared to normal and it will get only better. She drops a Kelpie snap for Sina which goes on the mercenary as usual. I love that thing. And then we get a Might mercenary and you think like why would you get Might? Now I have Might and Taunts and Amp damage. 
Oh, and corpse explosion. I have a lot of corpse explosion. I'm starting to outnumber the monsters on the screen. And from this point on, this build's insanely safe. Except for the arcane sanctuary where fun goes to die again. And your minions are just stuck at the red portal. But yeah, this is a Durial fight. It's not fast forwarded. Yay, revived. Exponentiality is a hard thing to explain. But just seeing the difference in these fights should do it. And from here on out, the game is uh, different. Remember when we were in normal and had to run a lot and dodge a lot and stuff? Yeah, that time is over. I mean, we are just plowing through Nightmare. We're almost die because of a gold enchanted. But yeah, this is uh, Mephisto. Hello Mephisto, bye Mephisto. My mercenary can't even reach him. Let's say Fausto. And these are very dangerous fights, but not for a summon necro. A summon necro doesn't give a fuck about the game. Like once you get going, nothing's stopping you. Our health watch gets us a dull rune. Are you dull? Are you dull? No, it's Doll Io. Please don't make Io Doll. And we have Diablo here as well, who's just... Yeah. Once again, I'm just standing there being... I, I look very important, don't I? And then we have the Ancients, where I also stand around and am very important. I'm like that guy from Office Space who's like, Yeah, if you could do that, that would be great. I can't remember the name of the guy, but it's like, Yeah, if you could do that, that would be great. I love Office Space, it's such a good movie. It's so true as well, it's just... <laughs> I work in an office if you can tell, it's so true. I'm basically just asking my minions about the TPS reports. They're like, dude, we're trying to do actual work here. Come on, fuck off. Anyway, we get the bail. Who we completely clown upon. Because we are a summon necro and nothing is relevant for us anymore. Except one more thing, but it's in hell. Going there and trying to see who can fuck up bail first. Because they're, they're actually just in the line to fuck him up at this point. And Bill's just like, I I don't have enough tentacles for this. And then we go and shop for the second time. I buy a couple of wands. I was looking for a specific one, but I found a few cool ones, so I bought those as well. Not that I'm ever going to use them, probably, but might as well have them. And I figured with going into hell that I would want a different weapon. Like the Teatal Ambo is really nice and all, but I figured I want safety in hell. So I make a white, a dull Io. Found a Korun somewhere, so I make a hustle. And I make a hustle for my mercenary because it gets a level 1 fanaticism. I now I have might and thorns and fanaticism. Also, I went back to the bow. I went for the white. The bow was just better. It might be different on higher levels, but for now, this felt just so much better. So I have absolutely no resist whatsoever. And also, where was this fucking thing when I tried my rare only paladin? I end up going for some more levels, basically just to boost my army count. And I find an ethereal to throw. And then we go towards Andariel, who is basically downgraded to irrelevant at this point. Just take her behind a pillar and shoot her. We find a ring. It's a ring, ring, ring. Dwarf star. Act 2, where we find a Jalal's. Which is really cool, it's just completely useless, but it's a really cool item. I love Jalal so much, it's such a cool helm. Finally something different than, oh man, I'm wearing a Shaco, whoopee. I showed this part because I almost fucked it up, by the way. 
the thing that I wanted to show is that your one way to summon your minions without teleport is just use a town portal. And from there, let them clear the board. And then we go to the other spot where Fun goes to die. The Maggot Lair. And all I want to say is about the Maggot Lair is, uh, yeah, don't we don't want to talk about it. I mean, this is a build that functions on having a lot of space, and the Maggot Lair has 3 inches to work with, and even though I'm very familiar with that, I would like more. And the Arcane Sanctuary has the same problem, we're just all standing in line to get through. Playing the Summon Monster in the Arcane Sanctuary and the Maggot Lair feels like being stuck in traffic. It sucks. But after that, we go back to our regular scheduled programming of absolutely clowning on everything in this game. So here's Durio. And then we had to act three. Where we just outnumber the forest. Nothing targets you. Craft a plus two skills amulet. It has nothing else, but it doesn't matter. I was wearing crap. Grades start flowing in, so we have an upgrade to what's a Saigon's Wrap. Woohoo! Look at this. I'm doing Hell Council. I'm not taking damage. This is the safest build there is. No ifs, ands, or buts. This is the safest build. Oh, apparently something hit me. Oh, no. I end up finding a ghost armor as well. It's a plus one skill armor, but I just don't need it. This is not fast forwarded. Mephisto dies in seconds. And in Act 4, it's more of the same. We just outnumber the act at this point. Oh, I also find a Vex rune. Which is nice. And then, uh, like 10 minutes later, I find an Ist rune. So that's very nice. And then I decide to go and kill Diablo. Because I'm basically just walking towards the end at this point. And once again, look at that management potential over there. Running away, looking important, not adding anything to the fight. Much potential there. In the meanwhile, things are dying, getting murdered. And I'm like, yeah, man, I look important. So these are my resistances. So I figure with a Vex and an Isrune, I might as well just fix them up a bit. And I end up making a silence. Which is Dol El Hell is the Vex. Plus two skills, 75 resist all, MF and two mana after each kill and nothing else that matters. Then we get stopped by a door. The one downside with this build, if you don't have the space and the auto target just doesn't get it, it's like eh. But once we head through the door, they say that when one door closes, another door opens. So we open that door and then we go and kill Tri Socket. It drops us in a shield. Find a Kraken shell. A Kraken shell. We unleash the Kraken. It's a Mavina's Embrace. Figured I'd show it. And the set Quiras, which is who? He mu. He mu. Hammer time. It, anyway, it's an armor with life. And then we head to the ancients. How the fuck do you pronounce that armor? Like, armor? Yeah, that's probably it. Anyway, the ancients are. Yeah. During editing, I was really trying to make these fights look like dangerous and important. So like, this is the actual only th dangerous part that happened in Act 5. 
I mean, we just ambushed. We're just outnumbering everything at this point. I have 30 minions. I have my fanaticism. Curse. It's like, yeah, amp damage. So we go to Bale. Who actually isn't going down very quickly to these enemies. And... So I decide to go make some new friends. And they're called crushers. That's not by accident. I also find an ornate plate. I, I don't use it, but I found it. So I might as well show it. It's a Griswold beast. And now the bale fights, fights looking like this. This is actually really cool. I like the animation of all of them being in the exact same spot. It's so cool. I edited the bale fight, by the way. This looked like two, three minutes of the exact same shot. I'm just literally standing there doing nothing. And with that, da -da -da -da, we got that. So my equipment. Yeah, it's just a bunch of crap. Like, there's no good pieces here except for the silence. You don't need them. Oh, and the edge bow. And these are my skills. And that's it. Thank you for watching. We now have Guardian Zul. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.